The most pleasant feeling for some people is having a pet to hug, cuddle, just having a pet. Sometimes taking care of the pet makes you feel better about yourself as a person, but it's a pleasant feeling for everyone. Some people like simple pets like cats and dogs, but uh, my family is more into the likes of cats, dogs, sun conyards, rats, uh, a whole litter of rats, turtles, fish, all kinds of things. And to add on to that, I used to own even more unique types of animals, such as chickens, snakes, toads. I mean, the list really goes on and on and on. But I think that the different ways that people express themselves with pets is important. And I think it's important to be able to own um, safe animals within a certain limit. Recently, I had decided that I wanted a new unique type of animal, a hedgehog. Sadly, after doing some quick research into the subject, I learned that in Alabama and in the state of Georgia, uh, it is illegal to own every kind of hedgehog, every species of hedgehog, I should say. I wanted to do more research into this, so I began looking into why. And today, I plan to talk about why this just or why the justification used to make hedgehogs illegal isn't fair and should be reconsidered. The first thing that I took a look at was what uh, a lot of the lawmakers said, and it was that hedgehogs are invasive species. The important thing about looking at laws related to animals, and while it is important, uh, the thing that a lot of lawmakers don't do is think about the different species of animals. When we're talking about getting a pet hedgehog, Typically, people are going to go for the African pygmy hedgehog, which is, um, it's just the most common, it's the cheapest one. Uh, the European hedgehog, however, isn't very common to get as a pet. I'm sure there's some cases where people do, but it is, uh, it is considered an invasive species. And because the European hedgehog is considered an invasive species, all hedgehogs are invasive. European hedgehogs are extremely invasive and they shouldn't be pets. They uh, cause many problems in countries such as New Zealand, and I'm totally fine with those being illegal. The African pygmy hedgehogs, however, um, when they go into the cold, they sadly pass away. They they can't be considered a... They can't... In, they can't... Um, infest infest, sorry, uh, they can't infest a, any of the 50 states during the winter p because they die. They can't be considered an invasive species uh, for that reason. So I think that, once again, I think that lawmakers need to take a look into the different species and branch it off into that. But another common argument against hedgehogs is the uh, diseases that they carry. Um, most of the diseases that are a problem uh, are carried by puppies as well. Uh, these, these diseases can be really dangerous to younger people, uh, especially five-year-olds and below, and older people. But the thing is, these diseases, they're, most of them aren't vaccinable for puppies, and uh, they can spread just as, just as much as a hedgehog can spread them. So while it, it is a... It is a decent argument from the opposite side. It is when you look into the other animals that can also have these diseases, it's not that strong. Another disease that's uh, really popular to talk about in the hedgehog debate is rabies. Um, when you when you think of it, puppies can get rabies, yes, but you can vaccinate them. Uh, hedgehogs, you cannot vaccinate. The good news is if you get a hedgehog from a healthy store, one that's been taking care of all of its pets, hasn't taken it outside, which sometimes you're going to get unlucky. And that it's the same way with puppies. Um, people have sold rabid puppies, but sometimes you're going to get unlucky. You might get a rabid hedgehog. But like I said, 
it goes it goes both ways. It could happen with either species or the more common species. You can't vaccinate the hedgehog, but as long as you're not taking it outside, which is not something you should be doing with your hedgehog anyways, as long as you're not taking it outside near other animals, it is safe and most likely won't receive rabies. These are small problems that happen with other animals that are legal anyways. I think the most important thing, if anyone wants us to change, is paying attention to who we're voting for. We, we haven't taken a look at some of these laws that were made in uh, busier times. We haven't, we haven't taken a look at some laws that need to be changed, I'll say that. And looking for candidates that will relook at some of these laws, especially laws pertaining to animals, that can really make a difference for the whole entire animal community. The future of hedgehogs, the future of any other unique type of animal that is wrongfully banned from a state. Um, I think it's extremely important to look into that, do research, vote, go out and vote always. Um, because only we can make a difference. And I mean, writing to your local authorities, I mean, senators, um, governors, you know, donating to their campaign a little bit and then writing to them. Sometimes it goes a long way. Sometimes uh, something small like that, they didn't realize people cared about and they didn't put time towards it because I mean, who cares about hedgehogs? In the end of the day, I feel like how how we treat our animals and what kind of animals we get uh, is a way we express ourselves as people. I feel like people express themselves in different ways. Art, uh, like I said, animals. I mean, reading. We we express ourselves through through these things, and I think that hedgehogs are a way for us to express ourselves. I think it's important to look into it, even though it may seem trivial to some people. Because most people, I mean, who cares about a hedgehog? But there are people out there who care. There are people who care about these small things that you couldn't imagine even being a problem to you. And that's, that's why I think that it needs to be looked at.